The college football transfer portal is opening again tomorrow. And the Iowa Hawkeyes have some news. We break it down, plus basketball news. We go portaling today. Locked on Hawkeyes. You are locked on Hawkeyes. Your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts, and you can also watch us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Terms and conditions apply. Well, we are a day away from the transfer portal opening once again here during the period. It will go until April 30th, a couple of weeks, and it is going to be wild and crazy. Now, one thing we know with Iowa football, there isn't a whole lot of wiggle room right now for the Hawkeyes as we are days away from Saturday and the spring football game our only opportunity to see the team as a whole and at least get a few reps with some guys and an opportunity to get our eyes on what the new offense is going to look like with Tim Lester at the helm as the new offensive coordinator. With that being said, Iowa definitely need some work. So you start with scholarships and Iowa is over the limit, about five scholarships over at this point in time. The main reason for that and the main reason we didn't see a whole lot of portal activity going back the last time that the window was open is because Iowa doesn't have the scholarships and they use their funds. They use their NIL funds instead of going out and being a big portal player like they were the year previous. Instead, the Hawkeyes made the decision that they're going to work to bring guys back for another season. That's why you get guys like Jay Higgins and Nick Jackson and Quinn Schulte coming back for another season. Jamari Harris is another one you throw in there and you go down the line and you're talking about a huge number of players coming back for a bonus season, a fifth, or even at times a six year of eligibility. And because of that, Iowa just wasn't doing a whole lot of shopping, but there are some major needs and really the biggest one. I don't think there's any doubt about it is the quarterback position. And this is not to say that Cade McNamara cannot be the starter for next season, because I think all everything that you point to says that he is going to be just that, but what's behind him? Well, there's two guys right now that are getting majority of the reps, two scholarship guys that are getting a majority of the reps. First of those is Deacon Hill. And Deacon Hill, God love the young man, he's just not a good quarterback. He just isn't. I mean, there's nowhere to slice it. And after what we saw from him a season ago, not just the inability to be a competent quarterback and making throws that you need to be able to make, on top of it, he was a turnover machine. And it's still one of the most confounding things that I can remember in the 25 years of Kirk Ferentz as the head coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes, a guy that is absolutely more than maybe any other coach, just despises turnovers. And yet they just kept trotting Deacon out there time in and time out. Now, the reason for that is because who was behind him was a true freshman a year ago and Marco Lyonez. And though we saw a little bit of movement, a guy that can do some things with his legs, We also saw late in that bowl game against Tennessee another drubbing at the hands of the Volunteers, a guy that is not ready to be a quarterback. He can be an athlete. He can be a skillful guy that can run around and maybe make some plays with his legs. He can't throw the football or at least has not shown an ability to be a thrower of the football this point in time. Now you can point at his quarterback coach, the guru that was also got his hands on Spencer Petras, maybe ruined him. What, Danny? Tony Rapiopi, uh, boy, that guy, need to get him away from Iowa quarterbacks. That has not gone very well in the past, but that's the reason for it. Iowa needs to find a backup quarterback, and I think that's where you start. And when you're talking about these kind of players, I think more than anything, what you're looking for is you're looking for players that still have remaining eligibility, that walk into the situation, yeah, they're going to compete. Yeah, they want to get opportunities, and yes, come August camp, you want to be at minimum the number two. We don't know where Cade McNamara is going to be health-wise as he makes his way back. And even by the time we get into August camp, is he going to be a full go at that point in time? Is he going to be a guy that's going to be able to take every number one reps? Are they going to have to pull back a little bit? Just the injury concerns that he has. How many live bullets is he going to see? 
when you're talking about practice. And though, yes, you're always seeing the quarterback out there and they're wearing the different color jersey and you don't hit them. Still, there's going to be times that guys are falling at their feet, those kind of things. And how careful does Iowa need to be? Cade McNamara is now coming off to back-to-back seasons where he was lost because of injury. His final season at Michigan and, of course, his past season at Iowa with the torn ACL. And with those things, you're looking for a quarterback. We're not talking about a stopgap. We're not talking about a guy to be a backup for the fifth year. I think the thing that makes the most sense for Iowa, and if you truly believe that Marco Lioness is not the guy, We know that Deacon Hill is not the guy. If you believe both of those things, a guy that you can come in and hope that at minimum will be the backup for 2024, and then after that will compete for the starting job. It'll be him and Lionez. James Rezar comes in. Jimmy Sullivan still a couple years down the line, but that's what you're looking for, and maybe he is the guy that kind of builds the bridge until you get into really the kind of guys that Tim Lester wants to bring in at the quarterback position. I think that's what you're looking at right now. It makes a whole lot of sense. Now, I know there's been a lot of rumors out there, and there's been a whole lot of talk about Ohio State quarterback Lincoln Kineholtz. And I think most of this comes from maybe a wish. I know there is a social media account uh, that said just that. Uh, talking to some people, uh, my brother-in-law, an Ohio State grad, there was a lot of people in the high school sca- uh, space out there, and uh, talked to a few people out there and just said, no, that's there's no smoke at this time. Now, could Kineholtz be looking for a job? Look, they got five quarterbacks at Ohio State, and the likelihood he's not going to see it. He started the bowl game last year when they were decimated with all the opt-outs that they had last year in that game against Missouri. It didn't go well, but that is the kind of guy that would make sense. And even if it's not him, that's what you're looking at. A quarterback, redshirt freshman, sophomore, something like that, that has a couple of years of remaining eligibility would make a whole lot of sense to go that direction. Backup quarterback. That is a number one, I believe, at the top of the list. Also, you need another wide receiver. And more than anything, you need a big wide receiver. Now, I know we've seen Jacob Bostic out there. He's been practicing in the spring. And from the reports, it sounds like he's had a very good spring. We've heard this before. We heard it when he showed up at camp his freshman season. The problem as he's never been able to stay healthy. They're still looking for that big receiver. Caleb Brown playing more of a slot role. That makes a whole lot of sense with his size and his skill set. What a great running back he was at the high school level, trying to transform into a wide receiver. We saw glimpses a year ago, but he is not an outside guy. He is a guy that makes the most sense in the slot, use him in a myriad of different ways, go that direction. That's also where Iowa needs to be shopping. I believe that they need to go out there and they need to find a big wide receiver. That 6'2", 6'3", 210-pound wide receiver, a guy that can go up and make some plays. You know, your Brandon Smith type, somebody like that, maybe a little bit more speed, Amir Smith-Marset, somebody in that range. Now, the difficult part about that is the ineptitude of the Iowa offense, especially over the last two seasons, of selling any wide receiver to come in and play in this Iowa system. It's going to be difficult. They were able to do it a year ago, get Seth Anderson, Caleb Brown to come in. And I think both of those guys have a chance to have new, nice seasons in this new system coming up this season. But that is another area you're definitely looking at. What else is on the wish list? I, again, scholarships aside and knowing that there's going to have to be some cutting that's going to happen for Iowa to get down to the 85 scholarship limit coming up this season. Maybe a pass rush specialist, somebody like that. You look at this defensive line, I think you're happy with the way that they're set up, but you don't have that prototypical speed guy off the edge. Could that make a little bit of sense? Depth at the cornerback position. Jamar Harris is out again. He's been really banged up throughout the course of his career, and you just wonder, you know, health-wise, what he's going to be. Depth at that position. I know they're excited about John Nestor, what he can potentially be down the line, probably going to be your number three cornerback. I think that's a position that would certainly make a whole lot of sense. You don't need a lot of depth defensively. Now, there's a great offensive lineman in there. Sure, bring him in. Offensive lineman, though, more than any other position, that is something that across the country people are targeting and finding a good offensive lineman, a guy that can come in and unseat a bunch of veterans, as I will have back this season. Probably going to be difficult to find. You know, do you find a rusty Feth type, somebody like that? I think that would be a good thing as well. Portal doesn't end with football, though. The portal is hot and heavy in basketball. We're going to talk about that as we continue here. Locked on Hawkeyes. Patrick McCaffrey has found a home, and we're going to get into some of the targets for Iowa, both men's and women's basketball. It's a big news coming up on the women's front. One of the top players in the portal is making a visit to Iowa City. We'll get into that as we continue. This is Locked on Hawkeyes. 
Today's episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality, quality qualified candidates and professionals that are right for your role. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. As a small business owner myself, I've used LinkedIn Jobs because it is so difficult to find those right people sorting through the resumes and who makes sense for you. LinkedIn, it's just not another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be perfect for your role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows as small businesses, you're wearing so many hats, doing so many different things. You might not have the time or resources to make that right hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even launched a feature that helps write job descriptions for you. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Once again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Trent Conner back with you again here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. All right, let's get into the basketball side of things. And yes, Patrick McCaffrey has found a home. So for anybody that's been listening here, Locked On Hawkeyes, you everydayers know, we've talked about this towards the end of last season. Now there was a crazy rumor out there that Patrick was going big sea fishing, right? He was looking for a big destination. Duke was the one uh, that had been thrown out there. But we knew this is the way this was going to end. Patrick said the, as much throughout the course of this season. This is going to be his final go around in an Iowa uniform. It shouldn't come as a surprise. It's not an indictment of the program. I think more than anything, it's an opportunity for a fresh start. An opportunity for a guy that has had a lot happen in his life. From the cast, cancer diagnosis that he had in high school. To what he's dealt with playing for his father at the University of Iowa. The disappointment the frustration, stepping away from the game, and a health, uh, mental health pause that he had a season ago, all these different things. It's just a, t- a chance at a fresh start, something different. And, and playing for your dad, it can be easy. It can be difficult, too. I, I think this is a great thing for Patrick. And were there holes in his game? Absolutely. And we talked about many of those. Were there times that it was frustrating? No doubt about it. There are plenty of things. Ultimately, though, this is a good thing. And I think this is a good thing for Iowa basketball, just getting away from the negativity that surrounded having a coach's kid to play on the team. Look, we dealt with the lowest of lows, right? We dealt with the lowest of lows with John Licklider, a kid that wasn't a very good 4A basketball player in the state of Iowa, being a walk-on and having to play minutes for the program. And though Connor and Patrick certainly were not at that garbage level that we had to see during the Licklider era, there were holes in both of their games, and it led to a lot of the negativity that surrounded both those guys being out there. Now, Connor was a winner. Connor was a guy that I think definitely was a helpful and impactful player to this roster. You saw Patrick has maybe more of a, a better raw skill set, if you will, with the size and athleticism that he had, and it just never all clicked. We never got to see, I don't believe, the best of Patrick McCaffrey. Alas, he is gone, and he's off to Butler now. He'll be playing his final season in the Big East next year. Of course, Connor working for the Indiana Pacers. You have that angle there, so both those guys will be in the Indianapolis area. Connor doing some scouting for the NBA team. Caitlin Clark, Connor's girlfriend, also making her way there, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But so much going on, so much to talk about uh, on that front. So what does this mean? One other thing we found out last week, late last week, was uh, Fred McCaffrey, as he was talking to a board at the University of Iowa, and he brought up the fact that Tony Perkins is in the range of $500,000 for his services next year, and Iowa can't compete. Now, you can argue the exact number. Is he more of a two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 player? Maybe. Did Fran get a little hyperbolic with a half million? Who knows? I mean, this is, again, all this funny money that we're talking about. And nobody has a real idea. Nobody can 
come out and actually give you a salary cap or a roster sheet that has the salaries of all these different guys because uh, we're working with NIL collectives. We're working with so many different factors that go into this, and you just don't know exactly what it is. But what we do know is Tony Perkins is going to command hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's something that Iowa cannot compete with right now. And Iowa cannot compete, and not just with the Indianas and the Kansases and the Blue Bloods, the Kentuckys of the world, but it's that next tier. I mean, when you see Texas Tech and Missouri and programs like that, and I was not at the same level, frankly, it pisses me off. It really upsets me that the University of Iowa, one of the top athletic departments in the country, in terms of revenue, one of the top 15 in the country in a year-in, year-out basis, in the Big Ten, and we know the financial parameters of that. And this is not some kind of knock on our collective that we have with the Iowa Swarm. It's just that people do not want to donate right now to Ben's basketball. And I think it's crazy. I think it's wild. I know football, you know, for most people, that is number one. Women's basketball and the ride that they've given us the last couple of years has definitely generated a lot of interest and a lot of people along with it that want to be giving their money to the women's basketball program. We need money to compete. And the unwillingness from the Iowa fan base to put their money up at the level that we're seeing across the country. We're not talking about some kind of niche sport here. We're, we're not talking about field hockey or soccer or swimming. We're talking about men's basketball. The number two sport in college athletics in Iowa can't compete. And not with the top level, with the next tier. And the tier after that, I mean, you go through and you talk about now the Power Five conferences with the Big East along with the Big 12, the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 10. And when you throw those conferences together, I was towards the bottom in men's basketball potential payments that they are able to apply with the NIL. I never thought we would be here. As somebody that grew up in the 80s, as somebody that knew the importance of Iowa basketball, to think that this is happening to this program is baffling. And I don't think a new coach is going to suddenly change that. Again, look around. Look at who Kentucky had to hire. Mark Pope, one of their own. A guy that's never won an NCAA tournament game. That's who Kentucky just hired. Look at some of the big jobs that have come open, and it's not like everybody's beating down their doors to take it over. Now, I was struggled in the last two recruiting uh, coaching cycles to get top flight candidates. And today, it's even worse than it was at that time. If Fran McCaffrey decides to walk away, if Fran retires, Fran goes on and takes another job, but pulls an Alford and takes a step down to get out ahead of the posse. Good luck. The likelihood that I was going to get a better coach than Fran McCaffrey is incredibly small. Can he catch lightning in a bottle? Absolutely. Could it be the right fit? Sure. You can argue all those points and argue until you're blue in the face. I don't believe, though, you're going to find a better coach than what Iowa has right now. And you can say that's scary. You can say that's disappointing. It's just reality. So I was out there shopping, and in fact, they're going to have a guy uh, coming up on campus this week. On Monday, uh, they will be getting their first official uh, visitor, if you will, in Drew Philwell. Kid from Florida. Miami's involved. All right, that's a little bit scary. Uh, scary. Played at Moorhead State. Maybe saw him in the NCAA tournament playing against Illinois. Averaged 10 points, over six assists a game last season. Brock Harding's not ready to be a full-time point guard. I just don't see it. With the physical limitations that he has at 160 pounds, six foot, not a great shot. Now he's a playmaker. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands. He's a great passer. He has those things. There are other components, though. And a guy like Feldwell makes a whole lot of sense. He's a stopgap. He's a one-year guy. He comes in there. He's their starting point guard. Harding's a backup. And then as Harding becomes an upperclassman, hopefully gets stronger gets the weight in there, is able to you know, add another 10, 15, 20 pounds of muscle to that frame, be able to defend at a better level with that size, then he can take over the point guard at a full-time role than his junior and Caesar, senior seasons. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. That's the direction that you go on that one. There's plenty of other names out there, but this is the first domino uh, to fall. Uh, Phil, well, after that is then going to be visiting SMU. Mentioned Miami's on the list. There's some other big ones out there, and uh, we'll see what I was able to do. The dudes, you can't go into a season with Brock Harding being your only point guard. Yes, Josh Dix can play it in a pinch. I, I get that. You do not want him. I mean, I've, I've heard talk about Price Sanford. Come on. I, I watched Price play 
He didn't handle the ball at the high school level. Now he's going to be a point guard, even at a backup role in the Big Ten. Come on, wake up. There's absolutely no way you can go into a season with that. There's a ton of guys in the portal. I was going to have to work hard to make this happen, but it needs to happen. Big news happening on the women's basketball front. We'll talk about that as we continue here. Lockdown Hawkeyes in the number one transfer in the country, according to some recruiting services, is making her way to Iowa City. I'll tell you about that. Iowa with two point guard visits set up. What does this say and what does this mean for Iowa women's basketball and the future as this program looks to continue the momentum they built a season ago? We'll do that as we continue Locked On Hawkeyes. Today's episode of the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Well, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball, it's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers out there, you can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. You heard that right. Guaranteed. $150, win or lose. There are so few times where it feels like, Boy, whatever happens, you're going to get money. That is the case right now with FanDuel. And you can bet on it and everything from slap shots to home runs, slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and it's super easy to use. A great menu, so many different avenues that you can go on FanDuel. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's right. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Trent kind of back with you once again here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Lots of news going on with the women's basketball team and the portal. Hey, want to let you know as well, Lockdown's NFL mock draft is coming up live April 17th at 6 o'clock Central Time, streaming on Lockdown Sports Today, the 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 6 o'clock Central. That's 7 o'clock on the East Coast. And hear what the local lockdown experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Lockdown NFL Mock Draft is coming up April 17th at 6 o'clock Central, streaming live on Lockdown Sports Today, our 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, let's go. And a uh, name that we mentioned a week ago, the apple of the eye for many Hawkeye fans out there in the transfer portal, it is Lucy Olson, Third in the country in scoring a year ago. She comes into this one, and she is making her way to Iowa City. So this is big news. And though she is somebody from the East, UConn is involved, and there's going to be a bunch of big names after. The opportunity that Iowa has here to build what they have done the last couple of seasons. We see Caitlin Clark Saturday night on Saturday Night Live. And uh, somebody had mentioned there were some rumblings that this was going to happen. I see, watch the cold open. All right, nothing there. It was good. It was funny. And then you see Gosselin come out and he does his opening bit. And you get a couple of sketches. And you're still not there. And then you get to Weekend Update. And sure enough, Caitlin Clark on Saturday Night Live. Caitlin Clark from West Des Moines, Iowa, Dowling Catholic High School, our Iowa Hawkeyes, was on Saturday Night Live. I don't know. We run out of superlatives, right? We just, you run out of things to say, this is ridiculous, right? There's only so many ways you can say it. And this one, another one that just took it to another level. So she's hanging out in New York, getting ready for the draft coming up this evening. And uh, we'll have plenty of coverage on that as the Indiana Fever will take her number one. So we have this going on. And it's just indescribable. That, that's all it is. Anyway, back to the Hawkeyes at hand. And we got plenty of Caitlin Clark coming your way. Um, so with this, Lucy Olson, big time score. And she took over for Maddie Segris the year before at Villanova. Segris was the number three pick in the WNBA draft. Had taken Villanova to a level they certainly hadn't seen recently in women's college basketball. and. She had huge shoes to fill, and she was able to do it. She's a different type of player than Caitlin Clark. 
Now, there's the old adage, you never want to be the person that replaces you know, the person. A lot of times it's with coaches, right? You don't want, you don't want to be the player or the coach that replaces the legend. Well, here, you don't want to be the player that replaces the legend. But if the money's right, if the NIL is there, and the opportunity to play in a style, and the way that Lisa Bluter has built this program, they've done it a myriad of different ways with all kinds of different skill sites, different types of players, and be able to mold and meld what you have there and put together a good offense every single season. I think this is a great opportunity. We know the fan base. Are we going to sell out every game of Carver this year? More likely not. However, get somebody like Olsen in there. Now you're cooking. Now, this is interesting, too, because then right after Lucy Olsen visits, Matty Schur is scheduled to visit coming up on Thursday. So Olsen will be there first, then Schur comes in. So is this telling us that Olsen is at the top of the list? It would make sense. Schur's a really nice player. Puts up good numbers, those kind of things. That would make a whole lot of sense, though, because Olsen, a lot of people consider the best transfer in the portal at this point, and if not, certainly in the top five. That would be the pecking order, I think, for most programs, and I think it's the pro the pecking order for Iowa. What's the likelihood, though, that Iowa gets a commitment right away from Olsen? And if they don't and sure is ready to commit, what do you do there? This is a balancing act that well, makes it tough for coaches. Now, that's what the money's for. That's why they're paid the big bucks is to have to make these decisions and do it. Because though it would be great to get Maddie sure, it absolutely would. If all of a sudden you find out in a week, two weeks, three weeks later after sure commits that Olsen wants to come to Iowa, whew, what do you do there? Balancing app. And that's what in this is in front of Lisa Bluter and company. Hey, if you missed it, uh, we've retweeted it. So cool to see Caitlin Clark on Saturday Night Live. Was there with us a bunch of her former teammates. Kate Martin was there. Jada Jimphy was there. Gabby Marshall was out there as well. Just incredible. Absolutely amazing. Draft's going to be great tonight. Really looking forward to that. And we'll be back with you with an instant reaction coming into your feed early on Tuesday uh, around midnight. We'll have that for you after the WNBA draft. It's going to be geared there. What are the TV numbers going to be for this? Expect another record breaking performance because of a draft, because of 22. Caitlin Clark. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. A busy week. Tons of football. Portal news as it happens. We're going to hear more and more names likely coming up this week. What is Iowa going to do on the football side? So much happening on the basketball front. And we got you covered. Your team every day here. Locked On Hawkeyes. That's what we do. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks!